Oh my god, you guys, the sun is going down and I'm out here in the fucking dark finishing this. Um, this is 101 Week 8 Part 12, and probably the final part that we will be going over today. Um, so let's take a look at it. Um, we're talking about what can we, what is worth quoting in a college paper. The next one is real confusing and complicated. Um, oh, in, in, in a work of fiction, right, a character may say something interesting, but the character is fictional, so they can't be an expert. Um, you gotta find you gotta find non-fiction experts to quote in your papers, okay? Because the person can't be an expert because they're not real. One of the things you have to do to be an expert is to be a real fucking person. All right, um, here's one that my students love to quote that causes all kinds of fucking problems: the Bible. Are you allowed to quote the Bible as research? Um, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> I should be able to answer that question, but I can't. The Bible's tricky. And the Bible's tricky because for a lot of people, Christians, the Bible is true. And so it represents facts. If you ask my mother about the Bible, she's going to tell you it's just facts. It's all true. Um, but, of course, for a lot of people, the Bible is just made up. And the problem is, it's so long ago, it takes place so long ago, it's hard to know if it's fact or not. Um, also, to make things trickier, um, it has a lot of, some sections of it are like ethical philosophy, like Plato. So that would be worth quoting. Um, but then some sections of it are more like mythology, like Moses, you know, splitting the waves uh, to exit Egypt. Um, and that's, that doesn't really, shouldn't really get quoted in a college paper. Um, now, Socrates has mythology, but he says it's a metaphor. For a lot of people, what Moses did is not a metaphor, it really happened. So it opens up all these complicated issues, and we'll be talking about this in Unit 3, which is audience. For some audiences, the Bible is fact, and for some audiences, the Bible is fiction. If you're going to quote something in a research paper, it needs to be it needs to be an expert opinion or a fact that will be accepted by, you know, basically your whole, almost your whole audience. Um, and the Bible is something that causes people to have such contradictory feelings on depending on if you're a believer or not. Um, and so it just, it's too, it, it's too complicated. You can use the Bible, but if you do, you have to have a paragraph being like, if you're a believer, blah, 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 blah. And then the next paragraph has to go, for non-believers, blah, 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 blah. And you can't dismiss that. You can't be like, for non-believers, you're wrong. It's, it's, it doesn't work like that. Whereas you see, for think about the difference. Plato and the Bible are both written a long time ago, and they both feature fantastic, crazy things like flying horses and reincarnation and, and, and you know, sp splitting of the waters and miracles. But notice that you can read Plato and learn a lot from it, but you don't have to believe in Plato. You don't have to be, like, converted to some platonic religion. It's just interesting to think about. Whereas with the Bible, for a lot of people, you need to be a believer in it. And so, since most of your audience, you can't expect... I said you have to write your paper so anybody, you could hand it to them and read it, but you can't expect or guarantee that your audience will be a certain type of Christian who believes the Bible's all fact. Because some Christians love the Bible, but they believe that it's metaphors helpful stories like Socrates tells. And some people believe, like my mother, that it's literally 100% true and it all happened. Um, so, tricky. Um, it's, a, it's a complicated one. Short answer is don't use it. Um, the longer answer is if you want to use it, you, you, you have to do two paragraphs on it every time to be like, you know, and you have to be generous and in communication. You better be able, to, your paper has to be read by Christians and non-Christians. So if you get a vaccine expert, that's somebody that Christians and non-Christians should consider trustworthy. But with the Bible, Christians tend to consider it trustworthy, but non-Christians don't. And it's just, it just opens up a whole mess of stuff. My students sometimes want to quote it because it's one of the, for some of my students, it's the only book they know. Um, and, it's, it, and again, and I feel bad saying you're not allowed to quote it because I'm giving them Plato. And it's like mythology about horses with wings and the nature of the soul. So I feel like a jackass being like, you can't quote the Bible. So I guess you can, but again, it depends. If it's Jesus talking about ethics, then that feels, that's more like philosophy. But if it's mythology, I guess you could talk about that. But then if you think of the mythology isn't mythology, but it's actually true about you know, the creation of the universe, then that does not seem like the kind of thing you can quote. So, and the Bible's really long and big and complicated, so it's tricky, but it has to do with audience. And the last thing I'm going to show you guys here, here is an, an essay, The Authority and Autonomy and Choice, The Role of Consent and the Moral and Political Visions of Franz Kafka. It's written by Robin West, 
and, and it's, I, it's on a website, see, but they say what book they got it out of. It's the Harvard Law Review. See how Harvard is trustworthy? You can look up Robin West. This person is trustworthy. This is tough to read, but you could read it if you really wanted to. This absolutely you can quote. Um, cool. Okay, looking good. And then I mentioned Google Scholar and all of this stuff. Okay. And now it is so dark that you can barely see my face anymore. So I've been out here teaching until the sun went down, um, but it went pretty well. Uh, I realize this is a long and exhausting week and you don't need to go through all of this all at once and I understand how insane this all is. Um, the point is, don't make, here's the conclusion. I want you to use other people's words and ideas in your paper. But I don't want you to make it look like they're your words and ideas. That's plagiarism. Don't do that. I talked about that last week. Um, so do use other people's words and ideas in your paper, but always say where you got it from. What does that mean? It means you better tell me the name of the person who said it and the name of the book and why they matter. And if it's a quote, put it in the exact words. And if it's a paraphrase, make it clear that you're saying, according to Plato, in, to put P Plato in my own words, blah, 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 or summarize or something. Uh, and then every time you quote, put commentary. The only reason you're quoting is so you can discuss it. And I forgot to mention this, but every time you quote something, if you quote one sentence, say three sentences about it. If you quote three sentences, say nine sentences about it. Just tr you need to be saying more about the, your, your opinion should be longer and more complicated than the quotes. The quotes are just there to help you. Um, they're just there to support you. They work for you. You're the boss. It's your paper. It's your idea. The quotes are there to work for you. Just like if you were a lawyer, you have a point, a thesis statement. My client is innocent. And then you call witnesses. But the witnesses, you don't just let them say whatever they want. You ask them questions and you make sure they say what you want them to say. Um, so because the main point is yours. The lawyer's point is that this guy is innocent and the experts are there to help. Your paper is about your point and your opinion and all the people you're quoting are just there to help. Now there is a lot of technical information you have to do. Um, I'm gonna come down here because my face will be a little bit brighter. There is a lot of technical information you have to do, which means you're gonna need things like page numbers after the quote and you're gonna need at the end of the paper to put things like the publisher and the year and the editor and the translator, if they have a translator, if they have an editor. So it's, and you got to put titles and italics if they're long and in quotations if they're short. And there's all this technical website shit. You got to put all this stuff at the bottom of the paper and the work cited. You don't need to memorize that. Just pull out my website, pull out my, my handout and try to do your best to get that information on there accurately. Okay. And then there was the larger question of is something worth quoting? And the simple thing is that you got to figure out is the, is the person trustworthy? Generally speaking, if you're going to quote something, you better be able to read a couple of pages before and after the quote, and you better be able to Google search the author's name to make sure they are trustworthy. Are they an expert? Do they really know what they're doing? Um, when you're researching, you're looking for unusual facts or um, expert opinions, and you got to find out, is the, is the place you're getting this information from actually trustworthy? Is the publisher trustworthy? Is the author trustworthy? Don't quote things that aren't trustworthy. And also, if it's too simple, it's not trustworthy because it's like for kids. And if it's too kind, and if you don't understand it, don't quote it because how are you going to know if it's trustworthy if you don't even understand it? Um, and that's it. So I know this has been an incredibly boring week, and I, I promise we're going to get back to Plato next week. And I know it's been ridiculous and exhausting, but um, that is citation, and now you know how to do it. So. Uh, and by the way, I hate to tell you this, that MLA citation shit, I need that at the bottom of all of your second drafts. So if you, if, if the highest grade I give first drafts is a B. If you're fine with that, keep it. Whatever grade you got, you can keep it. But if you want to raise your grade, you got to do this for the second drafts. So take a look at it. Do your best. I know it's ridiculous. I know it's exhausting. It's a crazy, it's, a, it's crazy and boring. And I know I can't, I can't believe I'm sitting out here in the fucking dark in the park teaching this, but um, give it a shot. And I love you all, and I'm sorry that this was an insane two-hour long video about boring shit. I hope you took a lot of breaks. Uh, okay, I think I'm done with week eight. And I will, next week, we will get back to Play-Doh. Okay, that's it.